Hi, I'm Scott from Panasonic, and in this video today, we're gonna to have a look at the brand new Lumix GH5 camera that's just been recently announced by Panasonic. This camera is the flagship model in the Lumix range, and it's really designed for the enthusiast, semi-enthusiast, and working professional, especially for filmmakers. It's got a lot of features, so this is gonna be quite a detailed video. Let's dive right in and have a look what the GH5 can do. The GH5 is a significant upgrade for the Lumix range. It brings with it a brand new image sensor, dual IS2 stabilization technology, amazing video capabilities including 4K 10-bit 422 recording directly to the SD card, and a weather sealed body design that's clearly targeted for professional users. At its heart, the GH5 has a brand new image sensor. Now this sensor brings new levels of image quality to this space. It's really, really exciting. The new sensor is 20.3 megapixels and has no low pass filter. Having this filter removed means that you get a whole heap of extra detail recorded in your images and footage. It also has big improvements in terms of its low light performance as well as its dynamic range. You simply will not be disappointed if you're a filmmaker or a photographer and you have the GH5. The GH5 features Joule IS-2 stabilization technology. Uh, this basically means that the sensor is stabilized with five axis level of correction, as well as the lenses in Panasonic's range also. And when you combine the sensor stabilization and the lens stabilization together, you get an even greater level of stabilization than either one on their own. This means up to five stops of correction, even at telephoto focal lengths. In terms of video shooting, this means that this will correct all those handshakes and handheld footage that you may be shooting on the GH5. Even if you're using the highest bitrate video modes or highest frame rate modes, that stabilization is still working to give you ultra stable performance, often eliminating the need for you to use a tripod or a steady cam rig. The Lumix GH4 was a breakthrough camera for Panasonic and set a new benchmark in the industry for what is expected in terms of video from a compact system camera. The body on board feels really great in the hand. It's a really solid piece of equipment. And given that it's similar proportions to the GH4, but with all this extra added processing capability and power behind it, this gives you an idea of the remarkable engineering feat that the engineers have achieved in creating a camera with this power in this form factor. The GH5 features a magnesium alloy construction and a weather sealed body. It's splash proof, dust proof, and freeze proof down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. This is ideal for photographers who need to face the elements with their shooting. So you'll notice on the back of the GH5, there's a new control option there. There's now a joystick that's customizable, but by default, it enables you to quickly set your focus point. In terms of function buttons on the camera as well, there are a huge array of options here. You actually have now 15 physical function buttons. Now that includes the standard five function buttons on the camera, as well as the direction keys, which can be programmed as function buttons, as well as the joystick, which can also be programmed uh, as function buttons as well. So every single option you could possibly want would be directly available at your fingertips without having to go through menus. On top of that, we also have five digital function buttons that use the touchscreen options as well to give you access. So a total of 20 customizable function buttons are available on the GH5. In terms of video settings, the GH5 provides you with a lot of control. In terms of the general format, you're able to choose between AVCHD, MP4, MP4 LPCM and MOV. MOV and MP4 offer you the highest quality settings. You have the choice of 4K at 60 frames per second with a 4208 bit format. You're also able to choose 4K 10-bit 422 at 150 megabits per second. Because the camera can now shoot internally at 10-bit, your luminance level controls are now expanded to accommodate this also. So Panasonic have also introduced a new firmware update that's coming later in 2017 
for the GH5. And this firmware update is gonna introduce three core new features to the GH5's range of functionality. This firmware update is gonna enable the GH5 to record extremely high quality footage at up to 400 megabits per second using an all intra codec in 4K at 10-bit 422. This is ideal for cinematic productions where image quality is of the highest priority. This update will also enable high resolution and very high quality anamorphic video recording capability. In this mode, you'll have to use an anamorphic lens on the end of your existing lenses, which will then squeeze the content in, and the video file will be an 18 megapixel video file, so absolutely insane quality. And then in post-production, you'll be able to de-squeeze this anamorphic file, getting a beautiful cinemascope footage that you're able to use for your short films or feature film applications. The last addition to this firmware update is a hybrid gamma profile that enables compatibility with the new 4K HDR television standard. In this standard, it requires that the content has 4K resolution, 10-bit in terms of its bit depth, as well as a high dynamic range. This profile that's been added to the GH5 will enable compatibility with this standard for maximum quality with the TVs. And the best thing about it is that it's plug and play, meaning you can plug the camera directly into your TV and enjoy that quality right out of the box. The GH5 has an array of options for filmmakers looking to delve into slow motion. If you're shooting in 4K, you can shoot it up to 60 frames per second. So if your output format is only 24 or 25 frames per second, this is a really strong level of slow motion capability. However, if you're shooting in full high definition, the GH5 can actually capture at up to 180 frames per second, which is a massive level of slow motion. This means that you've got more tools at your disposal and you can get the look and feel to your film that you want. So when we look at the photo style options on the GH5, you've got a huge range of options. The things that we've had on the GH4, like standard, portrait, natural, monochrome, etc., are all there. But then you've also got your Cine Like V, your Cine Like D for filmmakers. But there's a new one, and that's called Like 709. And this is a profile that looks very much like the Rec 709 you might be used to on your broadcast cameras. This is great because it means that you can easily match your GH5's look with your other cameras that are existing in your tool set. By doing this, you're able to get the look out of the GH5 that matches your other cameras and makes it easier for you in the edit to piece all the footage together, making the GH5 a great B-roll camera as well for your studio. So a common shot for videographers is the focus pull, being able to shoot with shallow depth of field and move from one subject smoothly to another subject is a critical shot for a lot of video applications. Now the GH5 adds a feature that makes this a lot easier. You no longer necessarily need to use the big focus puller equipment and that type of thing. You can actually do it in the camera quickly and conveniently. With the focus transition setting, you're able to pre-select three different positions in your scene. You're able to tell the camera how fast you want it to move, and you're even able to set a delay time as well before the move actually happens. Once you've got that set up, you simply press the record button and the camera will do the focus pull for you smoothly, conveniently, and quickly, and it means you don't have to carry around that extra size and bulk to the shoot. This is great for one-man operations or run and gun shooters to get these special shots that add a little bit of magic to your film. Another nice touch is the ability for you to set your desired ISO sensitivity range, setting a minimum and maximum ISO for video use. The GH5 has a range of great tools for the videographer, including things like focus peaking as well as zebra pattern. But there's two new additions on the GH5 that are really exciting, both the inclusion of waveform and vector scopes. So with waveform, you're able to position the waveform monitor anywhere on the display here and use that to monitor your exposure across the whole frame. And in terms of vector, that actually shows you your color range as well, which makes it really useful for getting accurate skin tones when setting your color balance. So when you have a look at the HDMI port on the GH5, you'll notice that it's now a full-size HDMI Type A port. Uh, this full-size port means that you're less likely to bump the cable out as well, 
and it's easier to interface with your other equipment. In terms of the menu options as well, you've now got the ability to output at 10-bit 422 at 50 or 60p for recording on an external device. If you're shooting in that mode, you can't record internally, but you are able to get that uh, quality outputted over HDMI to record on your external recorder. So the down converting options on the GH5 give you the versatility to interface with your existing equipment or the latest and greatest equipment. Basically on here you can set it so it outputs at Full HD or at 4K while still recording 4K in the highest quality to your SD card, meaning that you don't have to upgrade your monitor right now if it doesn't currently accept 4K content, meaning the GH5 is going to integrate really nicely with your existing equipment and workflow. In terms of audio capture on the GH5, you've got two options. You've got the internal microphone jack which you're able to plug in your favourite microphone or we've also got the new accessory designed specifically for this camera, the XLR1. Now this new unit sits on the hot shoe mount of the GH5 and what's great about it is it's actually powered directly from the GH5's battery so you've got no other power devices connected to it. Also the audio is transferred through the hot shoe to the GH5 so you don't have cables and that type of thing interrupting your workflow. The device itself accepts two XLR professional inputs. It has 48 volt phantom power as well for powering condenser microphones. It also features gain control, level control and cut filters as well. This is a really ideal solution for the mobile shooter looking for a flexible rig that they can take with them anywhere. The GH5 also features dual SD card slots. Now both of these slots are UHS-2, so compatible with really fast cards, which is definitely essential for this kind of recording capability and quality. Now with these two SD cards, you can actually de determine what content goes to which card. So you've got three basic options here. Relay record, in this mode basically, uh, the camera will fill up the first card first and then move on to the second card automatically for you and the cards are then hot swappable so you can change card one out with a new card and the camera will just continue to record. You've also got the backup recording capability which means that the content will go to both the first card and the second card for redundancy purposes as well. This is great for those jobs where you've got these events, you can't repeat the shot again so you've got this reliability in case of an SD card failure for example. And the third option is actually determining where the content goes. So you can have video go to one card and stills to another card, or you can split up, say, your RAWs and your JPEGs, etc. as well. So a lot of versatility with the SD card slots and compatible with UHS-2, giving you maximum speed. One of the benefits of the extra processing power that comes with the GH5 is the addition of a feature called 6K Photo. So on the drive mode dial on the GH5, there's actually a dedicated option for 6K Photo. When you're in this mode, the camera will essentially record an extremely high quality video file in which after the fact you're able to pull out stills from. Now this video file is 18 megapixels. It can record continuously with no buffer limit at 18 megapixels meaning that you're going to get 30 frames per second for these moments and you're able to use a touchscreen interface to scroll through and find the frame that you want, saving that photo in a high resolution format. We also have the inclusion of 4K photo on this camera as well. And 4K photo will run at 60 frames per second. And in that case, you've got an eight megapixel photo. So no matter what type of event you're trying to shoot and no matter how fast the action, there's a mode here that's gonna enable you to freeze frame that particular moment and save it as a great quality photo. The GH4 was the first camera in Panasonic's range to introduce DFD or depth from D focus. And in the GH5 it's been enhanced again with a much faster uh, readout speed now. So 480 frames per second means that you're able to track uh, moving subjects a whole lot better. But there's another new option in the menu as well and that's the AF customization functionality. So now there are four different presets that you can select that are customized for different types of subjects and different actions. Whether it be a subject that's moving in a constant motion and a constant speed directly towards you, or variable action like say a soccer match or something like that, there's these different profiles you can use. 
and within these you can actually go and customize those again. So you can determine the sensitivity of the autofocus, how likely the autofocus is to shift between subjects, and also the tracking sensitivity as well. So this feature is a really great option for people capturing moving subjects. The camera is going to be much better at tracking your subjects and ensuring you get sharp, in-focus shots when you are shooting things like sports, wildlife, or any other difficult to shoot moving subjects. So one of the most requested features we've had from users with the GH4 is the ability to set a minimum shutter speed when shooting in either aperture priority mode or program mode. So on the GH5, we've implemented just that thing. So you can now go in and set the minimum shutter speed that you require for the type of environment that you're shooting in. The camera will then go no lower than that shutter speed and will in instead bring up the ISO to ensure you're getting the shutter speed that's required for the job that you're shooting, while still giving you the ability to set your aperture and without having to delve into manual mode. So the menu system on the GH5 does look a little bit different to the GH4. Because we've got a bigger rear monitor now, 3.2 inches instead of three inches, we can actually fit eight lines on the rear screen instead of six, making it easier for you to see all the options and having less pages to actually scroll through. The other addition to the menu here is the My Menu option. This My Menu enables you to customize uh, and have your favorite options there for easy access at any time. You can actually go through and add your favorite options or remove them, sort them in the way that you like. So the GH5 has so many options and capabilities that it's easy to get lost within the menus because there's so much there. The My Menu makes it easy for you to access the things that you need to access quickly and conveniently without having to delve through pages of menus. There's another really cool thing introduced on the GH5 and that is the ability for you to save the settings and your customization of the camera to the SD card. And what that enables you to do is to at any time load up those settings again on your GH5 or another GH5. So if you're running with two or three GH5s uh, in your business for example, you're able to set one up how you like it and then match all the other cameras to that one camera as well using the save and restore function to the SD card. A really cool feature that's been added on the GH5. Another nice change on the GH5 is the ability now to customize the naming structure of the files on your SD card. So not only can you actually now name the individual files themselves, you can also apply a name to the folders, making it much easier for you to sort after the fact. So an example of where you might want to use this might be if you've got two shooters on a particular event, you can actually put the name of the cameraman as the, as the prefix in the file name, or uh, you might also have the position or the location of where that camera specifically was in the shoot as well, meaning that you don't have to dig around in the edit suite afterwards working out which camera was which. Um, it makes it easier for you to find your content after the fact and a nice little improvement. Lumix G cameras have had Wi-Fi on board for a number of years now and they give you some great versatility. The ability to remotely control your camera or transfer your images has become second nature for a lot of photographers now. The GH5 ups this by adding Bluetooth to the capabilities as well. And this Bluetooth LE connection means that you've got a permanent connection between your smartphone and your camera using very, very little battery. But what it means is you don't have to go through the Wi-Fi setup process when you want to use these features. You simply wake the camera up from your smartphone or you act access the functionality that you want directly from your camera and the Wi-Fi connection is automatically made in the background by having that permanent Bluetooth connection. A really great simple little innovation but it means it's much faster for you to use these features in the field. So when I had my hands on time with the GH5, I wanted to put the battery life to the test. So I set it up uh, filming a stopwatch to see how long I would actually get out of a single battery. I set it to record 4K with dual IS enabled as well. And I was astonished to find that I could get over three hours off a single battery. This is gonna be great for those event shooters like wedding videographers, documentary filmmakers, or news gatherers where you are out in the scene for a long period of time and you need a camera that's reliable. This is uh, an amazing thing for those type of shooters.
So there you have it, the Lumix GH5 packs in a ton of features into a really small, compact and lightweight package. It's perfect for indie filmmakers, working professionals and hybrid photographers who like to combine both stills and video shooting into one camera package. If you'd like to learn any more about the GH5, head on over to www.panasonic.com.au. Thanks for watching.